Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, Ohio Republican Jim Jordan fails to secure enough votes for speaker, at least for now. And one of the biggest hospitals in Israel has set up an underground ICU unit in preparation for a possible ground operation in Gaza. Plus, we are tracking nice weather for the middle of the week. Those details coming up as Mountain News at 5.30 starts now. Dedicated to Southern and Eastern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News at 5.30. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. For the first time since the House voted to remove Kevin McCarthy as Speaker, the full House met to vote on his replacement. But that just put the divisions among the House Republicans on full display. CBS's Skyler Henry has more from Capitol Hill. Of which the Honorable Jim Jordan of the state of Ohio has received 200 votes. Jim Jordan failed to receive enough votes to become the next Speaker of the House. No person having received a majority of the whole number of votes cast by surname, a Speaker has not been elected. But Jordan is not giving up. Will you be Speaker by the end of the day? I hope so. The first round of voting put members on the record Jeffrey. as to whether or not they support Jordan. Rutherford. Scalise. The outcome could lead to public pressure on the holdouts to get on board. At the end of the day, we're in a position where um, now uh, people can, I mean, they're out there. They're going to, their constituents will let them know whether they're for them or against them. It's unclear what Jordan can do to win over the 20 holdouts or if anyone can get the full support needed to become Speaker. But the House is paralyzed until someone can get 217 votes. Meanwhile, the Senate is preparing to work on a bipartisan bill to help Israel. The Senate must, above all, work quickly and swiftly to draft, consider, and pass a strong aid package for Israel as soon as we can. That includes military support, intelligence support, diplomatic help. We'll take a look at the package when they send it up, um, make suggestions to improve it if that's needed. But clearly, uh, the world has changed dramatically in, in the last uh, 10 days. But the measure won't go far for now, because the House can vote on it or any other bill until the majority is united behind one speaker. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. If things do not go Jordan's way, at least one GOP lawmaker is circulating a resolution to allow the acting speaker, Patrick McHenry, to keep serving until next month. Former President Donald Trump is scheduled to be interviewed under oath today. The testimony is related to a lawsuit connected to his time in office and the, the reported wrongful termination of an FBI official. Trump's deposition is to be conducted by attorneys for a former FBI official and an FBI lawyer. Peter Strzok is accused, accusing the DOJ of wrongful termination because of Trump's anger toward him regarding the Russia investigation. Former President Trump is slamming the limited gag order issued against him by the federal judge overseeing his election subversion case. Trump spoke to reporters today before entering a New York courtroom to attend his ongoing civil fraud case. The gag order restricts his ability to publicly target court personnel, potential witnesses, or special counsel Jack Smith and his staff. And I'm not saying anything wrong. I'm saying the truth. I won't be able to do this with that trial because the judge, which of course we're appealing, because the judge said basically I don't have a right to speak and I'm, a, I'm the number one candidate leading the Republicans by 55 or 60 points. That should be over. The judge overseeing the civil fraud case in New York previously issued a gag order on Trump last month. The Biden administration is cracking down on the types of semiconductor chips that be, can be exported to China. Citing national security concerns, the Commerce Department announced an expansion of policies first introduced last year. The goal is to hamper China's ability to procure advanced computing chips for the manufacture of advanced weapon systems.
Well, you're tracking some more gloomy and dreary conditions across the mountains into your Tuesday evening. Here's a live look from Buffalo Mountain, and you can see we are overcast at this location. That current temperature is also cool. We should be in the upper 60s. Most of us right now in the middle to upper 50s. 55 in London, 56 for Manchester, 51 for Clintwood, 53 in Grundy, also Prestonsburg at this hour. So once again, we are below average, but some better weather is on the way as early as tomorrow. But into this evening, more gloomy and overcast weather is on the way. But as we zoom out, notice we are tracking some high pressure over Tennessee. So that means some more sunshine. Also, some more better weather is on the way by Wednesday. And as we go into your Thursday, also watching out for some better weather for the first half of your Thursday. But by Thursday afternoon, also Thursday evening into your Friday, some showers, also some breezy weather and some cooler weather. All that is on the way later on this week. That full forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Steve. Cameron, thank you. A massive blast rocked a hospital in Gaza City today, killing hundreds and escalating an already violent conflict. Hamas blamed Israel, while Israel said it was a rocket misfired by Palestinian militants. As the carnage worsens, one of Israel's biggest hospitals is preparing for casualties of war. CBS's Haley Ott has the latest from Tel Aviv. Four floors underground in what was once a parking lot, Baylitzen Hospital outside Tel Aviv has set up an intensive care unit with 32 beds. This is a war in a different scale. Obviously, we can't foresee the future, but we have to uh, prepare for the worst. Dr. Itai Ben-David says in this basement, patients can receive state-of-the-art care. Departments located on higher floors have been moved down here to provide continuous care if the area comes under missile attack. There are monitors, ventilators, and the capacity to perform some surgeries. Staff are bracing to treat traumatic injuries like those seen on the battlefield. As a doctor, how do you feel preparing to move down into a basement to protect yourself and your patients? Yeah, I'm, I'm concerned about the patients. I'm concerned about my family. I'm concerned about my place where I live. We already treated something like 70, 75 casualties from the war. Professor Yaron Neve, the former deputy CEO of the Israeli Ministry of Health, has served in five previous wars and was recruited to Balenson to help set up the effort. I don't want that we have many casualties, but we can manage every number of casualties we have. He says though difficult times may be ahead, the team is ready to offer the best care they can. Haley Ott, CBS News, Tel Aviv. President Biden is now on his way to Israel to meet with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu tomorrow, as well as Arab leaders in the Middle East. American Jewish community leaders and lawmakers gathered in Washington earlier today to show their support for Israel. While there was thunderous applause for the lawmakers each time they vowed to stand with Israel, one of the most emotional moments came from a young survivor who described escaping from Hamas militants at a music festival. She detailed how she was rescued after three hours, but not before losing her best friend and hearing the violence surrounding her. I came here for the memory of my best friends and all the people that were murdered and everyone that is, is being held hostage and everyone that survived and for these soldiers and every person living in Israel. And even though that on the outside, it, I don't look like I have scars and I might have only a fracture in my elbow, but the biggest scar that I have is in my soul. Yesterday, the FBI arrested a North Carolina man who reportedly sent threatening emails to a Jewish center in the Charlotte area. Jeffrey Scott Hobgood is facing charges of communicating threats. A criminal complaint claims Hobgood sent a signed email from a Yahoo account to the Jewish Center on October 11th. Investigators say the email was addressed to, quote, Israeli Jews of David Starr. A new report from the FBI shows that violent crime in the U.S. decreased slightly last year, but property crime is increasing. In the report released yesterday, the estimated volume of violent crime declined 1.7%. The violent crime umbrella includes murder and non-negligent manslaughter, rape, aggravated assault, and robbery. However, the report also shows that the estimated volume of property crime increased 
7.1%. Coming up on Mountain News at 5.30, buying or building a home is a process, particularly in the current housing market. Tips to help you research and plan as much as you can. And another chilly night is on tap across the region. Those details coming up after this break.